You know, I get to thinking about, about heaven, that wonderful place we're going to be going to when this life is over. And I get to thinking, I can't help, when I think about heaven, I can't help but think about those that have gone before us. And, and uh, they're waiting on the other side, amen. Like Jesus told His disciples, meet me over on the other side. He told us, He said, I'll meet you on the other side. And one of these days we'll be headed out. You know, I'm, I'm just so glad that I, I can't express the feelings inside of how happy and glad I am that I can know that I am saved and my sins have been forgiven. Yes. I would never, ever, ever want to go back to what I had. I don't want to go to anything else. People say you're nuts. Nobody can know. That's no matter I know. And if nobody else knows, I know. And that's what's good. Amen. I'm glad I know and I hope you know this morning and can say that with all assurance. Sure. Let's stand this morning as we turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter number 52. Beginning in verse number 1. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised than the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. And thus saith the Lord God, My people went down aforetime in Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually, every day, is blasphemed. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore shall they know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bringeth good news, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Father, thank You for the opportunity to be here this morning and to worship You in song. And Lord, that we pray that You'll help us to worship You in the Word of God in this service as we preach, as we listen, as we take to the Word of God and allow it to do a work in our hearts and to change us in whatever way is necessary. I pray, Father, that you'll manifest yourself in it. And Lord, bless each hearer that is here. Speak to every heart, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah is speaking to Israel to awaken and to come out of their oppression. They've been oppressed and what has happened is that the children of Israel had gone into Egypt during a great famine. The reason they went into Egypt at this time was that they could eat. They needed food and Egypt was the only area that had food that was stored up during the famine and they would go and work for corn and buy corn and things of that nature, and they would feed their families. They had to. They didn't have much choice. God has a way of putting us in places that sometimes we have to go to Egypt in order to find what God wants to feed us. Sometimes we have to go down roads that we don't really want to go down, but sometimes those things are necessary in our life. Sometimes it is God that leads us down that road, and sometimes it's us that leads us down the road. And our choices make the difference in the way we spend our life. 
I appreciate the Apostle Paul and all of his bondage and all of his years in prison and all of that he was faced with and the oppression and, and all those things. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned that in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. The Bible teaches us that happier are ye if you're crucified for the cause of Christ suffering for being a Christian. The Bible says, happy are ye. You know, I've never found anyone outside of myself that can make me happy by choice. You all can say, well, Brother Barry, we choose you to be happy. But only my choice makes that happen. Only my choice can make me content and satisfied in the Lord. Now only God can satisfy me. Only my choice of allowing God to satisfy me, no matter what we face. You know, we've been going through some wonderful times in our church, experiencing great services, people getting saved, baptizing folk, and seeing things happen, visitors coming, and things of that nature. But remember, uh, your adversary the devil goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He never takes a break. All right? And we need to recognize when the devil comes against us, the first thing he's going to do is attack your mind. And then if he can't get your mind, he's going to get your mind off in some gutter, some shape, some form, some twisted road somewhere. We think that God has forsaken us because nobody loves us and nobody understands us. Israel had to go through these things and God is teaching a lesson here as He calls out to Israel. He said, Awake, awake, put on thy strength. He said that they had been uh, captured in verse number 3. I want you to look at that. He said, Ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. I'm going to explain that in a second, but I want to preach on this subject. What is it worth? To you. What is it worth to you? At the end of this chapter, we're going to look at what Christ went through for us. It was worth everything that God had to offer for us. We need every day to examine ourselves and ask ourselves the question. When we wake up in the morning, what is today worth to me? What is Christianity worth to me? We're living in the greatest days of our time. People. We think because we didn't have sugar for our tea or not enough sugar that our day is going to be bad. We missed our morning coffee and we think our day is ruined and destroyed. We bicker and we complain about little petty things while in other countries People wake up to bombings and killings, destruction, no places to sleep. We in America have been spoiled to materialism. We think because we don't have the newest car. We don't think because our relationship with our spouse is the greatest thing since life's bread that we're ruined and we're destroyed. I can't help but think of the people I've heard testimonies of how Men have lost their wives after 40, 50, 60 years of marriage. Uh, we were talking just yesterday, and uh, I'm trying to remember uh, somebody was, I think Sister Gail was talking about this, this old man, not her, her daddy, matter of fact, her daddy. Miss Gail was talking about her daddy. She said, and after all of those years when her mom died, she said, for about three, four, five years, she said, it didn't take long. She said, Daddy would just sit there and do nothing. She said, finally, my brother said, Dad, you're getting up and you're going to meet somebody. You're not going to die like this. It, it wasn't that long. It might not have been years. It might have been, been months. I don't, I don't remember what she said. But she said, what gave my daddy life was to get out and go and be with somebody and have companionship. The Bible teaches us that God did not make man to dwell alone. That was never God's intent in the first place. 
You say, well, Brother Barry, God made Adam and He didn't make Eve until later. But when God made Adam, God would fellowship with Adam. That was God's intent. God wanted to fellowship with Adam. Then God gave him a woman because He looked at all the animals. He made them all male and female. They didn't think about this. If, uh, I, just I just have to hit this because I'm hitting on creation. I have to hit on evolution.